I know why you're here. Talk about penny stocks? <laughs> Me too. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday, July 15th. Now, what I like to do, folks, is just share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock that I came across through the day. I trade penny stocks every single day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm always looking for ones that have heat. And I'm looking for the heat in most cases by looking at the charts. I spend a lot of time looking at charts, following the stocks I'm playing, looking at scans. So while I'm over there, I'm just browsing charts. I'm looking for a chart that looks ready to run, that has stopped its downtrend and started an uptrend, that's got big bounces or that's been running for days. When I find a chart that has heat, then I'll go through that company's press releases and filings looking for hot information. If I can come up with a piece of hot news to match my hot chart, we've got ourselves a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to play. <laughs> these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you. Right now, we're taking a look at ticker PLCKF. This is Pluralock Securities, Inc. Now, I am no stranger to this company. I did cover it twice last year. She's actually a lot higher now than when we looked at her. The difference, though, is that I found her looking at the chart today, but it was a different chart completely. Fact of the matter is, she was in some sort of change when I looked at her for a long time. Her ticker was PLCKD. They pull off the F and put a D on there when something is changing. Could be the name, the ticker, share structure, a lot of things. Well, once they are done with the change, they then pull that D off, which was only there temporarily, and put the F back on. Well, they did that May 15th, May 16th. So up to May 16th, we've got the old chart, and then we got a new chart, which has hardly anything on it but bars. But you really couldn't miss the breakout because she has been climbing for the last 10 days, doing well over 500% gains, and she was really pushing it today. Now, when it comes to catalysts, there isn't a particular catalyst that's got her running. It is the ripple effect. She's had so many pieces of news of things she's doing, contracts she's bringing in, money that's on the table. It's just created this tsunami effect on the chart. So, Pluralock, she finished the day at a buck 11, and she was almost up 50% today. She's on the better tier of the OTC, the QB. We call it better because it's better than the pinks. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> the pinks don't give you any validated information. When you get to the QB, you've got to be at least a penny, no more sub-penny stuff, and you have to have your financials audited by a CPA. That's great. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. That actually gives us something called fundamentals that we can now weigh the company up with. You don't get that on the pinks. They give you numbers. They're just tallies, though. There's no auditing going on with those. So we are on the better tier with this company. Speaking of validated information, look at all those green ticks. We got everything you could hope for here. The ones I'm always harping about, verified profile and transfer agent are here. Independent directors, which are listed when you have aspirations of uplisting. Not just talk. You list them here when you've filed something that says we're thinking about uplisting. So we've got that going on. Plus, we've got a real nice bonus here, folks. This is penny stock exempt, which is a great thing. Even though they're under five bucks and on the OTC, they're not considered a penny stock because they've proven themselves to be responsible, kind of like a 16-year-old acting like an adult. The actual definition says that the company's been in business for three to five years, has had millions of dollars in either assets or revenues during that time period, and they've kept up with their filings. They've done everything they're supposed to, so they're not showing themselves to be a risky startup company. So they're not treated like a kid anymore. We treat them like an adult. So even though it's a penny stock, it's not a penny stock. We're going to look at it anyways. So what is PureLock about? Well, they tell us here that PureLock sells cybersecurity solutions to the United States and Canadian federal governments. Wow, is that your only customers? Along with Global 2000 companies. So they deal with cybersecurity for computers, data infrastructure, cloud, all that stuff. And it's very deep what they do. And we're not going to get into any of that. What I'm going to do is show you the news. As I said, we've got a ripple effect going on here. Now, I have gone all the way back, but it kind of rolls over. I just want you to see what's going on. 
I am back to October of last year, 2023, when they had secured a contract with the U.S. Department of the Treasury. Whoa, that's serious, right? That's some serious security you need there. They got a $5.1 million contract. Well, up here in 2024, we get a new contract for a new year. Purelock announces a $6.1 million contract with the U.S. Treasury. Repeat business from happy customers. Then in December, they get a three-year contract renewal with Canadian Air Transport. Another big contract being renewed because they're happy and satisfied. January, the company receives a $4.7 million order from the U.S. Public Library. Also in January, the company received $2.5 million sale order from U.S. hospital systems. Then in April, they had some administrative things going on. Private placement, a big investor put a lot of money into the company. Debt settlement, that's always good. And debiture repricing, that's all good things going on. Following this, they did a reverse stock split. On April 17th, they announced it. April 19th, they did it. It was a one in 10. Brought the shares down from about 430 million down to 43 million. Then we have a piece of news at the end of June, the company got an $814,000 three-year contract with an existing customer to deliver cloud security to major laboratory data and advisory firm. So this is a customer they've been dealing with who has more places they can use their services and they've just added another one to them, making that contract even bigger. Another one of those situations just happened here a week ago. PureLock's critical services expands existing engagement with an S&P 500, NASDAQ 100 semiconductor company. They don't tell us who it is, but obviously if you're an S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, you're a pretty big company. And the piece of news that came out today doesn't sound like a catalyst, but we had our biggest gains today. She pushed hard. PureLock Security appoints former White House lawyer and senior CIA officer to Industry Advisory Council. <laughs> Guys dealing with security, cybersecurity is right up his alley. So all of this news is adding up to what I think is a tsunami that we've seen growing on the charts the last 10 days. What was the volume today particularly? Well, if I hit the right button, I'll be able to tell you. Over the last 30 days, she's been doing under the radar, 43,000 shares a day. Today, she jumped up almost four times as much, 170,000. Now, that's not a huge number. I will grant you that, but it shows that it is climbing right now. Not only the volume, but the price up 50%. Share structure for the company. As I said, they had the reverse stock split, so we're down to 43 million. I don't know what the float is. They don't tell us what the insiders own. I could just subtract that and get it. All I know is it's not going to be over 43 million, which is not bad. Anything under 100 million, folks, is a decent float. And it could be considerably less. I have no clue. Market cap for the company, we are currently at about 32 million. Financials for PureLock. Wow, wow, look at the growth between 2020 and 2021. Now we've got to add three zeros behind these numbers. So we went from under a half a million in 2020 to almost 29 million. Wow, huge contracts adding up fast. 2022, they kick it up to 47 million. And at the end of December 2023, they were up to 53 million. Now, what's curious is their cost of revenue. It's kind of high. I'm thinking that they have a digital product. I'm thinking they're dealing with something from cloud going to their customers. This looks like they're building infrastructure, putting in wiring or computers or something like that, because that's a high cost of revenue. Luckily, though, they are bringing in profits, and the profits are growing, too. Take a look at those quarterlies. Up and down. Low was the last quarterly report, $8.5 million. High was the end of December 2023 at $17 million. But still, they are bringing in profit. Looks like we should have another financial coming out here any time. Take a look at that balance sheet. Not forgetting those three zeros. We have about a half a million dollars in the bank. Total assets about 13 million. Yeah, 
Liabilities are heavier. We got 16.6 million. So we are holding stockholder deficit for this company of 3.8 million. Taking a look at those disclosures. We've got nothing since uh, May 2024. 20, and let's see if we have a, another financial here. No. So the one for June should be coming out anytime now. Probably at the end of this month, it should be dropping on the table. I'd be interesting to see what their revenues are. So that's what we got going on here, folks. We've got lots of news building up, lots of these multi-million dollar contracts, happy customers renewing their contracts, adding more onto their contracts, and they just got some big wig in, CIA ex-White House lawyer. So that made a big deal today. And as I said, the chart has been running for 10 days, going up between 500 and 600% with today being its biggest gain. Let's go take a look at it. We're over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are taking a look at ticker PLCKF, but we have to look at PLCKD if you want to see her history. Now, I've got these on four-hour charts, both of them, and I have two months of trading here and two months of trading there, and I've tried to line them up where they should be. As you can see, she was in a downtrend here, coming down hard. On the 15th, she closed at about 35 cents. On the 16th, she opened up a dime lower down here at 25 cents. Falling to a low of 19 cents, she did that halfway through June and just stayed down there until, let me open this up so we can get a full picture here. That would be the 3rd of July. She started the run, folks. She was down here at 25 cents. And over the next 10 days, she hit a high of $1.14, coming back down and bouncing right back up. And right now, she seems to be uh, maybe a buck 10, a buck 11. Look at our volume. It has been growing nice and steadily, staying strong. All of our SMAs, we don't have a 200 day SMA here yet on this virgin chart, are turned up and climbing. Wow. Look at our oscillators. All of them are ski slopes. All of them going to the moon, red hot, looking really sweet. Come on down to that one hour, 20 day view. Well, it's pretty much the same picture, isn't it? You just get more bars here and you can see how she is starting to pick up momentum here, especially today on news that really didn't look that hot. People getting hired and fired really doesn't have a lot of effect in most cases. This one did. She jumped from 63 cents up to a buck 14. We're at least 90% there. She came back down, but look, she never even touched the 10 day SMA on our one hour chart. She leveled off and she started to climb. All of our oscillators are still showing a lot of strength, folks. Every single one of them is going to the moon. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Perfect chart, right? You have a low bubble in this corner, high bubble in that corner. Whatever happened in the middle doesn't matter. That's a perfect chart. We went from 36 cents up to a buck 14. She was riding on her 50 day SMA. She took a rubber ball bounce here. I call it a rubber ball bounce because like a rubber ball with air going under the water. As soon as it comes out of the water, it jumps. It jumps out of the water. And that's what you got here. She dipped underneath and jumped out of that water onto that nine day escalator. And she rode it all the way from 57 cents up to a buck 14. Pulling back down, looking like she had another rubber ball bounce on our 20-day SMA here. Turned right around, and she is starting to climb again, folks. Now we've got a 200-day SMA, which just came into the picture. And surprisingly enough, the price did not gravitate to it. In 8 out of 10 cases, when a new SMA comes on the board, you normally see the price go to it, regardless if the price is under it or over it. Didn't do that here. A lot of strength. She pushed away from that hard and fast. No way, no day. I've got places to go, people to see, money to make. And our osculators look sweet, folks. All of these are turning into power right now. They are just coming into their power. So if you like what we're looking at here, folks, you're going to want to watch this stock tomorrow. But do some more due diligence. You know the more you know, the more you're going to grow. Ah, no, it's not the end of the show. I got another stock to share with you. Come see what I got. I guess it's only fair. If I told you we're going to talk about hot penny stocks, 
<laughs> with an S on the end, I should give you more than one. So the second hot penny stock we're taking a look at is Green Pro Capital, ticker GRNQ. No, she's not in bankruptcy. That Q is part of her ticker. Now, I found Green Pro by looking at the charts. It's a hot chart. It's an atypical breakout chart. That's the name I give this pattern. The pattern is a 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious with the price up underneath it doing the same thing. Then the 200 starts to level out and go flat. That gives the price a chance to turn up and cut through that 200 and start to run. Well, she's doing that right now. She had big news come out today, hot news, and she blasted through that, and it looks like she still wants to run. So Green Pro, she finished today at a buck 18, and she was up over 35% today. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with a host of benefits compared to the OTC. First off, it's free to trade on the major exchange. You don't have to pay to buy your shares. You don't have to pay to sell your shares. Plus, there's a heck of a lot more money and volume up on the major exchange. You get to trade these pre-market, after-market. And if you're not paying attention to those periods, you're missing some of the biggest jumps I've ever seen happen in those periods. And one of the most important things we don't talk about enough, they got a lot of rules up on the major exchanges that's keeping these companies honest. I like that. So what is Green Pro about? Well, not for lack of words. The description here is a little bit confusing. Basically, they work with financing, banking, wealth management. So they tell us they are working over in Hong Kong. But what they're really doing is working with digital assets online. All this news is going to explain what they're doing. I have gone back here to April 23rd, 2024. We are going to read the first and the last piece of news here. The first one, jumping into this. This came out April 23rd. The company has acquired their Shirea compliant ESG digital asset exchange license from Laban Financial Service Authority in 2022. GreenX is fast becoming the leading security token exchange in the digital asset space. Following the business consolidation with Crypto SX in March of 2023, GreenX now hosts issuers from a diverse field covering advanced battery technology patent, refined Chinese ceramics tokenization, and gold deposit backed tokens. What they're doing is selling tokens on an exchange they now have a license for. These tokens do a variety of things. Most of them are to put investment into projects. People are looking for investors. We buy these tokens. That's how they get their money. Say a hotel chain is building a hotel somewhere. They need money for it. We buy the tokens. They get the money. They start building up the hotel. As it progresses, our tokens become worth more and more. We have a series of pipeline for RWA tokenizations, such as rare earth elements, sapphire gemstones, IOT utility advertising that will go online in the next two months. Well, this came out in April, so that should be happening right now. We are also exploring numerous green projects around Southeast Asia, including waste management and perpetual magnet electric generation that are contributors for the betterment of mankind. A couple more projects they're looking for investments in. The exchange has also announced back in December of 2023 that it was venturing into the field of carbon credit tokenization. Part of the business expansion detailed in the initial license application back in 2022. The global trend of decarbonization led to a surge in demand for carbon credits, which in turn led to the valuation of the carbon credit market at $25 billion in 2022. And by 2030, they anticipated to be up to $145 billion. That is a huge jump, folks. Now, in case you're not familiar with exactly what carbon credits are, carbon credits are a reward and punishment system for good guys and bad guys. This is how it works. Say you're a good guy and you're eliminating carbon. However you're doing it, you're getting carbon out of the air. You get carbon credits as a reward. Those carbon credits are worth money. So you sell them. Who do you sell them to? The bad boys. 
Bad boys are punished. They have to buy carbon credits and buy them from people doing good stuff. And this is how the whole system works. And it is taking off right now. Everybody is going green. Jumping back to that news. Here in May, we had three pieces of news where they are launching, launching, launching. Green X targets 10 to 15 security token launches in 2024. GreenX aims to kickstart tokenization of carbon credits in Cambodia. GreenX to launch security tokens incubating ESG sustainable projects. Then they cut a deal up here with Ulama. They sign a letter of intent for Sharia compliant real world asset tokenization. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but it is another deal with tokens. Then at the beginning of July, the company announced the completion of WeNew presale tokens in conjunction with the WeNew portal. And they are launching a second round of presale soon. So they're already doing this. Then we come to the news that broke the chart out today. And it is hot news, folks. They tell us here, this came out today, Green X Core, a wholly owned subsidiary of Green Pro Capital, is pleased to announce Today, it has secured digital assets valued at more than $100 million directly under its ownership. These digital assets consist of a portfolio of security tokens and stable coins, which further enhance the value and credibility of GreenX as a regulated centralized exchange. So now they got solid assets to launch themselves with. In addition, we are pleased to announce the strengthening of our alliances with the signing of a strategic partnership between Green Pro Capital, Green X, and Bank Islam Trust Company. Our goal is to promote Laban as the main hub for the Islamic Digital Asset Center for high net worth and potential clients. Right there's a giveaway, folks. They have targeted audiences, people who have a lot of money. They've got the Islam bank backing them up. They just got a hundred million dollars worth of assets, which you're going to have to throw into the asset pile. That helps us. So they got a lot going on right now and it's all happening right now. So let's check out that relative volume. See what's going on with the company. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at the jump folks. Over the last 30 days, her average has just been over 12,000 shares. On the NASDAQ, folks, that's just not under the radar. That's in a coma. Today, she exploded big time, going over 10 million, 10 and a half million shares from 12,000. That's a lot of extra attention. That's the one reason you should be looking at it. Share structure for the company. There's the other reason you should be looking at it. We got a low float. Not that I know what the float is, but I can see the outstanding share count is only seven and a half million. Float can't be any higher than the outstanding share count. And on the NASDAQ, it can't be any lower than a million. So there's your window between 1 million and 7.5 million shares. We've got ourselves an excellent float wherever it falls in there. Oh my God, 7 million. And how many shares did they move today? 10 million. So that means every single share today had to sell one and a half times, almost twice. So when these shares start moving, this thing can fly because it has a low float. Market cap for the company, we're at about six and a half million. Financials. Is Green Pro making any money? Yes, they are. They've had a jump, but they're just kind of holding even keel. Four years ago, they were at 2.2, jumping to about three then kicking it to 3.6 and at the end of 2023, pulling back just a little bit, about 200,000 to 3.4 million. But look at the profits. Profits are the most they've ever made, 2.9 million. So their profit margins are getting better. Looking at the quarterlies. Well, they've settled on about $650,000, which is about where they are most of the time. The last two quarters, they did break a million but they are steady bringing in profits. Take a look at that balance sheet. Not forgetting those three zeros. In the bank, we got about 1.6 million. Total assets, 7.9 million. Total liabilities is down, 2.2, which here they tell us we have 5.7 million. 
but they just got a hundred million dollars worth of assets today. Assets. Now, I don't know what column it goes in here, but it is an asset, current, uh, long-term, whatever. It goes in the pile. So I am sure we are now over a hundred million dollars in assets for this company, which is probably why the thing jumped today. On top of the fact that business is launching right now, you can see the smoke coming out from underneath the rocket. Taking a look at the disclosures. Well, we've got a couple of form threes here. Form threes are like form fours, except they tell you how many shares they do own at this very time. So you've got who owns them, who they are in the company, the date, and how many shares they own right there. Not that I look at these very often, but if it's something you're interested in, that's what they're about. And then we've got an 8K back here. Not sure what that's about. Changing up management. They did something there. And then we've got our most recent 10Q that came out in May. Really want to know what's going on with the company. They do have a lot of news. You can go through any of that. But a 10Q will tell you everything about the company from the day they started. And if you want to see what's going on right now, use your search bar. Put in 2024 as your keyword and see everything that comes up. That'll make it quick and easy for you. So I see a lot going on here, folks, with the bank backing them up and getting $100 million in assets. I can understand why it took off, but it looks like she wants to continue to run. Let's go take a look at this hot chart. We're taking a look at ticker GRNQ, Green Pro Capital. Got her opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. We are looking at 52-week highs and lows on this screen. Six months ago, we had a 52-week low of 72 cents. And halfway through February, we shot from a buck up to $3.25 as our 52-week high. Short-lived, she came down and stuttered here at about two bucks and then fell down into the $2.25 range. Falling back underneath the 200 and she was on a serious downtrend here, folks, and looked like she was going to continue falling had not the news come out today. And that news launched her from 87 cents up to almost a buck 50. Pulling back down underneath the 200 to about a buck 12. Now, we had a ton of volume come in today, dwarfing all the rest of the volume. You can't even see it. It was so light here. But what's really impressive are our oscillators. All of them ignited hard today. Serious big jumps, crossing signal lines, crossing other lines. The only thing that's falling right now is our RSI, which is understandable. It was way up there and now it's down there. So that makes sense. Come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. Well, we've got our downtrend here. We had a poke through, she came back down. She's hovering around her 200 day haul here dipped underneath everything, and as I said, she was probably going to continue to fall had the news not come out. Now, I'm going to try to grab a support and resistance here. I think I see one right there. All right, I see this coming up, hitting its head. That hit its head right there. This came down and bottomed out on it right there, and she has pushed through that, and she is slamming on a bunch of our SMAs here. 200 haul, 50 and 20 day SMA. It was a big drop. Matter of fact, I think that just happened as we were talking folks, after market that just happened. She has come down here to about 99 cents, turning all of our oscillators. You can see that big drop right there really punched hard on our oscillators. Stinky. Let's come on down to our five day, five minute. So there's that support we got in there at about a buck 11. She fell down to the slow of 87 cents. This morning, as soon as the bell came on, she jumped, going straight up to a buck 32 in five minutes, folks, from 87 cents to a buck 32. She fell back down. There was a lot of bouncing going on here, folks. She was climbing hard and furious. We've got a low float here and we had a lot of volume sell off a bounce. Another high came into the picture here and you can see she has been sitting on this strong support for quite a while and she was sitting on it until just a few minutes ago. That sale came in at six o'clock. It is now 602. So that just happened. Got a brand new SMA that just came on the board. Maybe that's why it dropped. I tell you over and over again, when a new SMA comes on the board, eight out of 10 times, the price will gravitate to it. 
Now, normally it would happen a little bit sooner than this, but there's no rhymes or rules to it. It happens when it happens. Well, now that it's happened, and I'd be watching because this possibly could be a pillar. We had, oh, nope. See it falling? Doggone it. The full bar came through my SMA. If it was just a wick, I would think that she's about ready to climb. But I see her falling. So where is she falling to? Let's see. We got another one right there. That is at uh, 95 cents. If she's going to keep falling, we'll grab another one. Um, yeah, we got one there at 89 cents. And then we got the floor right there at 87 cents. And she is getting activity right now after market. What was the volume on this? Volume on that is 50,000 shares after market just in that bar. Now, I'd watch this, folks. I'd watch for a bounce. Obviously, you're probably not going to get into it now after market watching this video. It's now closed, so it really doesn't matter. But here's the deal. They are selling digital assets over in the Islamic area to high client people, people who have money, and they're selling investments. So when you buy a token for one price, you know it's going to go up not on hype, but on the progress of a project that can be put on paper. You can see exactly how far it's going. And then you've got the carbon credits, which is a market that is wide open to explode. So I'm thinking this is a hot stock worthy of watching over the next few days. Don't mind the big drops and pops. That is what charts are all about. But again, this stock has a very low float. I don't know what it is, but I know it's less than seven and a half million. And when all these shares come in, you're going to get volatility. You could scalp it. You could get a nice pop, sell up here. She drops, buy back in. But it isn't going to hurt to do some more research, folks. I only tagged on some of the information. That's it. Two stocks today, but go do some more homework. It isn't going to hurt you, right? The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.